And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the monastery, the open bar of the internet, the world's greatest shit show, and the place where we, the good brothers and sisters of this most holy of temples, seek enlightenment through the drunkest, craziest, and most batshit ways possible. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildra, and with me I have a returning good brother to the temple, previously uh, previously as part of the Balsamic Moon game games collective with Witches of Midnight, and now developing now developing a a bit a bit of a cyberpunk romp with Glitch City Uprising. Absolutely. The one and only J. Gavin Moore. How are you doing today, man? I'm so glad to be back and uh, a little cold, but otherwise fantastic. Mm -hmm. uh, the, so, How about yourself, sir? Well, this time of year, cold, this time of year, cold is but is just par is just part and parcel. So mm -hmm. it did. So it didn't really it didn't really bother me. Um, the only <laughs> disappointment was that there wasn't as much snow on the ground because I wanted some free ammo. Mm. <laughs> Ten inches here in Virginia. Mm -hmm. oh, that's what she said. <laughs> yeah, and we had a little bit of snow too. Yeah, and I, well, one one of my one of my favorite little stunts has been, had was getting some getting some lunch trays from a nearby school, filling them with snow, and laying them around my roommate's bed Ooh. while he while he's asleep. <laughs> Instant air conditioner. Well, the, well, well. The fun part is, you know, you know, he steps out of bed and he steps in snow. <laughs> because, because most people will do the hand in warm water or the shaving cream. I right. am more ambitious. That is ambitious indeed. <laughs> or, or, I, I'd say ambitious, but it's, but it's more of. Any stunt that I do, anybody could theoretically do. It's just a matter of, do you have the balls to actually go through with it? <laughs> do you have either the gumption or the insanity to, to actually try and pull it off? Right. Oh. But since Glitch City Uprising is, is, very much a, is very much a cyberpunk affair. Yes. This would be as good, this would be as good a time as... It, as any to dive into what your first introduction to cyberpunk as a storytelling genre was not cyberpunk in, ter in terms of games but just the idea mm -hmm. of cyberpunk as a genre period yeah i i kind of walked into it backwards uh i had never really paid much attention to cyberpunk when i was younger so like uh, went through my like role playing, uh, my early days of role playing. I backed into it because a friend of mine was running a Shadowrun game, and I was like, "Well, I I can't turn down someone running a game for me." Um, it was one of the worst experiences of my life. We fought a kraken in a puddle uh, in an alley between two streets. Uh, that was literally how the game started and ended. Um, so, but then I sort of learned cyberpunk, like I said, backwards, starting from reading all the Shadowrun books and trying to figure out how it was possible to run this game properly. Uh, and then sort of backed into cyberpunk uh, literature uh, from there. Mm -hmm. So started reading Gibson and uh, Philip K. Dick, who at the time I was aware of, but I hadn't really connected it to cyberpunk. Uh, since then... I, I got massively into it, so started watching all the sort of classics of cyberpunk uh, from Akira to all the Blade Runner-related uh, material, uh, Minority Report. I've even got a game that I have shelved that's based on the works of Philip K. Dick, mm. so kind of a, um, almost an anthology-style game with, with psionics um, that is... Is still on a back burner somewhere. Uh, actually, it's, I know it's in my Google Drive, in a very half baked form. Yeah. So yeah, that's how I got my start. Um, and since Huge you brought up fan of, since, yeah, go since ahead. you brought up, do androids dream of electric sheep? Mm -hmm. Um, 
by way, by way of Philip K. Dick. I'd like to share with you an unfortunate image from the Virginia Book Company. That, okay. Um, that it was definitely a case of you should you should have thought this through. This was uh -huh. the this was the price tag on. <laughs> on... <laughs> wow. Oh. I'm, I'm sure some of them do. Yeah. I think this is this is an issue of ju of just having a long title with the, with this automated setup, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, that is very unfortunate, but fortunate for us because we get to live in a world that that has that sentence written down somewhere mm -hmm. and published, really. Yeah, it's you know how so you know sometimes a. The, there's there's the implication of something that you just didn't plan for that ends up making that sort of that sort of bad joke. Absolutely, yeah. This is it's one it's one of those kind of situations, and well, for well for me, I'm so, I'm certainly going to make make fun of it because ev because everything is on the table. Nope. Yeah. No one. That is going in my that. Discord <laughs> immediately. Yeah, probably well, not immediately. I will do it uh, as soon as this is over. But yes. Yeah. <laughs> but given given that, I would I would like to do a bit. Of, I would like to do a bit of a lightning a bit of a lightning round of sorts. I'm going to give you yeah. a name that is that is associated with cyberpunk, whether whether it be through whether it be through literature, whether it be through film, whether it be through. Um, Video games, whether it be through tabletop games, and you can tell me if you've di if you've dipped into it, pl played mm -hmm. it, or some similar comment. It's like it's like a really really bad Rorschach test. <laughs> yeah, go for it. Excited. Okay, so Ghost in the Shell. Yeah, uh, pretty big fan. Uh, have watched the. Uh, I have not seen the the newer one with. Uh, Charlotte Johansson was it? Yeah, no. that one was it. Okay. If I'm not but, uh, if I'm being honest, that came anime. out. That one isn't terrible. It just came out too late. Mm hmm. Like it came by the time that I had the I I had said the same thing about and about John Carter and Ender's Game when you've had so mm -hmm. many people crib notes from that crib notes from those book from those right. books. And that doing the original just isn't going to have the same impact. Oh wow, yeah, yeah, you're totally right. I've actually noticed that as being sort of a problem in cyberpunk in general is that there's there are these big formative uh, pieces of media that uh, if you haven't seen them, but then you've watched all the things that they inspired. Well, actually, you know, it kind of happens in all of culture. I remember watching uh, the classic uh, Rosebud. I'm uh, trying to think of it. The uh, Orson Welles mm -hmm. movie, and everybody's like, "It's amazing," and it's like, "Yeah, but this is we're seventy years later. Everybody has d redone all of these things in this movie better, and I'm so accustomed to them. I can't watch that movie and enjoy it or how people saw it when it came out, uh, because yeah, those those thoughts and those ideas have been reused so many times, and in many cases, better." Mm -hmm. Yeah, I I agree with you. That that's definitely a problem that Ghost in the Shell uh, kind of has, especially if you've already seen like Akira and things like that. Well, uh, or Tetsuo the Iron Man. There's there's all there's also the issue of so of um that live action movie was trying was trying to ha was trying to play half seas with the Oshi mo with the Mamoru Oshi movie. And mm. some and some of some some of um the laughing man story in standalone complex uh, and just not being just not being able to commit I mean gr granted right. each granted each welcome to Hollywood well even in Japan each adaptation of the original ghost in the shell manga has mm. done something mm -hmm. different with it the original yeah. was definitely not, was definitely Significantly far removed from Masamune Shiro's original manga. Um, same thing. Same thing applies with Standalone Complex, and th and then further with Arise, and 
now we and once again with the net with the um cg series on netflix which i haven't seen I haven't either oh and that it's sounds like a watch party for the future <laughs> it is something that um that that um shiro encouraged he views he doesn't view in any adaptation as the true one, just ones that are optimized for the medium or the story that they're telling. But mm. you already you already mentioned Akira, so I won't go into I won't go into <laughs> that one. Although I wouldn't I wouldn't be opposed to somebody tr to somebody trying again now that now that um because when the, when that movie came out the origin the um, manga wasn't finished. Like only oh. the first two volumes were done, and it took some no some notes from the end. Mm. Uh, I'd l I'd like to see somebody try again, but I don't think anybody want wants to take that risk. <laughs> Underst understandably so. Um, although I I will I will stay to to certain to certain um certain Western animators. Stop! Stop saying you're inspired by anime and all that it amounts to is just the bike is just the bike slide. Everybody's fucking done the bike slide. <laughs> yeah. You're, you're not. You're not. Or, or or somebody saying we're we're inspired by anime and it just amounts to I watched Sailor Moon once. <laughs> like stop, <laughs> just stop. But, um. I will, I will, I will veer into. Have have you dipped? Have you dipped into the works of Mobius? I have not yet, because that was definitely an influence on both the, on both Akira and Blade Runner. Okay. Um, Mobius is an is a very interesting um, artist. Um. In the on the video game end of things, I'd be remiss if I didn't bring up Deus Ex. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I haven't played it, but it has. It is something I've watched a playthrough of, uh, and I found it enjoyable. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, never, never hugely got into it. Um, are we talking the original? Or are we talking the Adam Jensen games? The games. I didn't. I actually am not aware of the original, so I'll have to yeah. look into that. Because there was the original that was done by Ion Storm, which is a story in and of itself mm -hmm. it had a follow-up called the invisible war which um was not very good was not very good and committed the sin of you of universalizing ammo for all of your weapons that was a terrible idea <laughs> uh, that then th there was project snowblind which was supposed to be called deus ex clan war but because of how bad invisible war was that didn't happen mm. Um, Project Snowblind is it, it's been memory hold by a lot of fans. <laughs> that to to put things in perspective. Um, then of course there was Human Revolution, and then man and then Mankind Divided. Um, and th those are the ones with that with Adam Jensen. So that that's the history when it comes to that. But moving on. <laughs> um, Cyberpunk, specific, specifically, you know, Pondsmith Cyberpunk. Mm hmm Yeah, uh, when I got into D10 games, you know, World of Darkness and things like that, uh, I, I dabbled into um, the Cyberpunk, uh, I think it was 2020 at the time. Mm -hmm. And uh, I there were some mechanically interesting things about the system, but it overall felt a little too bland to me. Um, especially having come from Shadowrun into Cyberpunk, it just kind of felt like it's like uh, cut cut the game, cut a third of the game out, and uh, and try to run with that. But um, you know, it, it's a great sort of universal place to tell stories from, uh, and so I think that part of it stuck with me. Mm -hmm. oh. And I've played the uh, the game the the recent game well recent what about two or three years ago now uh, uh when it first you, came out i'm assuming you're referring to 2077 yeah and um man the the fact that he was working with the cops like on a practically first name basis uh was really really bothered me like you know 
working with cops in a shadow or in a uh, cyberpunk game just seems like a a fast way to lose the majority of your audience. So you know the fact that he's like doing bounty hunting and stuff really turned me off to that game. Um, yeah, it's like a, how how do you not see the government as part of the complex that is causing your your problems you know so yeah to me having a government that was not really much of an enemy uh was kind of gross so yeah uh, i've heard they've kind of corrected that in some of the patches and mods and and updates but um i haven't come back to it since the days when you couldn't climb ladders properly so um and i'm get i'm guessing you have you haven't looked into cyberpunk red the game, uh, I have it downloaded, and uh, yeah, I've never opened it. Um, so yeah, I have a copy and uh, interested in it, but um, I, I don't really. I haven't had a group to to run any um, any games other than the the ones we're working on for such a long time now. Yeah. That um, yeah, that's just one that hasn't got cracked open yet. Mm-hmm. Um, this is not f not fully cyberpunk, but cer but certainly adjacent. Um, mm -hmm. Dark City. Oh my god! My probably in my top ten favorite movies. Well, no, easily in my top ten favorite movies. Mm -hmm. Actually, is my I call it my favorite genre of movie. The you're far more powerful than you know. Um, movie is is 100% my jam. So yeah, uh, Dark City was kind of what pushed me onto that path. And now, I think there was a recent movie, uh, is that called Consecration, I think it was called, that, that uh, is majorly in that, I call it a genre, but uh, that kind of storyline, yeah, I am obsessed with those kind of movies. Mm -hmm. Dark City thematically and uh, am, um, with the ambience of that uh, world it absolutely fits 100% within the kinds of things I like to do and actually uh, was kind of an inspiration uh, in a way for this game yeah. as were many many other pieces of media but mm. uh, Dark City definitely you can't Dark City is almost part of, part of my personality rather than just a movie I like so yeah oh uh let me mess it's, with it. It's... Let me mess with it in one form. the The head stranger in that movie is mm -hmm. the Grey Poupon guy. Are you kidding me? No. <laughs> Same guy. Oh wow. <laughs> he also he also is the voice of Death in Hogfather Knight. Oh, okay. I can hear that. I think I can hear that. Yeah. So. <laughs> Now, so now, when you if you end up rewatching it, you will end up here. You end up hearing him going. <laughs> you end up hearing someone asking him, "Pardon me, do you have any great poupon?" Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh. oh, I can't. And when I'm not, I'm not going to ru I'm not going to ruin Discworld de death in the same way because, well, the, he is the he is the same person when when giving a kid a a sword as a um present for hogs watch you know the setting equivalent of christmas and being yeah. chastised you can't give her that it's not safe it's a sword they're not meant to be safe yeah it's da it's dangerous it's educational what if she cuts herself <laughs> that will be an important lesson <laughs> but obviously obviously um sh obviously there is the um, sh you already mentioned um, Shadowrun, mm -hmm. and which has gone th has gone through some interesting setup. Shadowrun mm -hmm. is is very much a cyber is a cyberpunk meets fantasy affair. Yeah. Um, and it sounds like that is an angle that you wanted to go with with Glitch City that mi that mixture of cyberpunk and fantastical. Uh, yeah, a bit. Um. I didn't. I tried to in the core uh, to not dive do too deeply into that. I would say it's uh, more like Fallout, where the ghouls have a bit um, more control. They have a bit of uh, sort of internal power. Um, 
So, but yeah, the the core of the game is isn't uh, any kind of like inherently magical uh, or fantastic thing too much. Uh, but as the expansions uh, move on, I'm working on the third, the second expansion, so the third book uh, right now. Mm-hmm. And yeah, it gets a little more fantastic um, as as things move on. Uh, it pulls in yeah stuff from Fallout, stuff from uh, well, let's see. I mean, heck, you could probably even do Avatar or something of that nature. Uh, in Glitch City Uprising, and it would totally work out. So yeah, it can sh- it can stray pretty far into fantasy if that's what your group is into. Uh, but the core is is pretty straight up standard um, cyberpunk. Um, just kind of a. Mm-hmm. Since you mentioned fall, since you mentioned Fallout, it's pro- it's probably not going to include the failings of Emil pa- Paglia. Emil Pagliano, I'm not bothering to pronounce his name properly because he because he's a doesn't deserve it. Doesn't deserve it, a shit writer and well you have I ended up doing a legit spit take when I found out that Bethesda does not do internal design docs for their games. Oh. Oh. Which um huh. explains you a lot. What? It does, yeah, now that you mention it, it absolutely does. But they but in that, but he's he and some of the other writers there have talked about not wanting to be beholden to twenty year, to what someone wrote twenty years ago, mm-hmm. which mm. speaks a lot Arguably. to the writing to the writing quality because, yeah, I I remember with um Fallout three and four I had I had lamented how <clears throat> some of the, some of the things with ghouls are horrifically inconsistent. Mm-hmm. Like whether or not they actually need food or water, it's not only <laughs> <clears throat> it's not only That's inconsistent. A pretty important... It's not only yeah. inconsistent between games; it's inconsistent within a get an individual game, mm-hmm. which is is a real telltale sign of not having what's known it what's known in television as a series bible, right? You know, and I've I've talked about this elsewhere. This this particular document that is meant to be a unifying presence so that everything is yeah. um, consistent within within the within the story that you're telling. Yeah, we do the same thing when we stream games. I'll, I'll write up uh, before I start streaming a game so that everybody knows sort of what page we're on uh, with that, and so that they can play their characters in a way that's consistent with the. Uh, the feel we're trying to give with our with our whole stream so yeah uh, bibles uh in that way hugely important and yeah when it comes to something as massive as a video game that spans you know what 33 square miles or something in in fallout 3 you know how can you not yeah mm-hmm. that just that doesn't make any sense to me and the whole i was i also ended up doing a spit take when i found out he he wanted to do some. He wanted to do radiation witches in fall in Fallout. Hmm. <laughs> well, I'm glad he didn't because uh, I mean that's not exactly where we went with it. Uh, I would say ours are kind of closer to radioactive X Men, uh, but yeah. on the very low powered end of that. Uh, yeah, I sort of everybody has it, a. He wanted to try. He wanted to try and move the magic system from Skyrim into Fallout Four, but oh my god, that would have been so <laughs> bad. Have it be based on radiation, but uh-huh. the but that magic system was taken out of the code by that point in time, so they couldn't do it. So, Ooh. is that, bullet. you know, is that is that a case of the of the universe re- um cor- self correcting? I'll leave that up to you. I'll leave that up to you. Oh. Discuss with your with your players and GM. Oh. I will I will simply say that as I, as I mentioned to you before, monks have doubled as priests in the past, so there's that. I think that's why everybody keeps asking me to bless their dice before we play. <laughs> oh. You might have found your true calling. Yeah, the the problem that, then again, then again, I get the same set of people who who say that I'm not supposed to drink because monk. 
Oh, <laughs> yeah, that's a that's a very bad misreading, especially historically of monks. If you think monks shouldn't drink, uh, go ahead, go go tell that to the Trappists over in Belgium. <laughs> but now, as I as as I now as I understand it, there are, within the core material so far, there are mm -hmm. s there are six playbooks because this is. Yeah. This is still utilizing the skeleton of the of um a lot of the sandbox in Forged in the Dark. Um, yeah, you could say it's sort of a a mix between Powered by the Apocalypse, Forged in the Dark, but it it's yeah it's its own unique system, but it definitely uses makes strong use of playbooks. Yeah, you you can train yourself to throw with your opposite hand, but at the end at the end of the day, when you need when you need to throw, you're gonna pick your dominant hand. Yeah. Oh. Um, it's the, it's that it's that kind of thing when I talk about the DNA of a give, of a given work. Yeah. Um. But I'd I'd like to kind of go it. I'd like to kind of go into the playbooks and what characters in fiction, um, come to mind as far as who would be a rough equivalent for each. Mm -hmm. Just to just to um. Yeah. So yeah, starting uh... with the Cromer. Yeah, do you have any that jump out uh, immediately? I feel like that's probably, aside from Wastelander, which is not in the these six, it's probably the thing that most people have, like, the most uh, knee-jerk, knee uh, oh yes, I know that character. The, um, Chrom the, the way that I see is the and me, and you can correct me on this, the Cromer mm -hmm. is this thing's equivalent to the Street Sam in in, Sam, in um, Shadowrun or the Solo in Cyberpunk. Exactly, yeah. Um, and except that we are happy to lean toward the cyber, cyber psychosis side of things. Mm -hmm. So every Cromer if if that's how you want to build them, should probably have some some level of cyberpsychosis, some some level of uh, neuroticism that they've developed around the the steel parts of their body. Um, so yeah, it it is it is uh, very very much that. Mm -hmm. uh, Street Samurai is a great. It's actually what they started as, um, and then I realized I need to get away from. Um, Shadowrun style names. This game is very, very different from Shadowrun, and so yeah, that's what I settled on. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, but yeah, they're. Mm -hmm. I may, I mainly, br I mainly bring it up beca because I like to draw parallels. Mm -hmm. But next on the list would be the ghost, which. Yeah. I'm yeah, guessing... you probably know them from hackers or <laughs> mm. uh, any number of other uh, pieces of media. Yeah, but uh, yeah, this is your in uh, Shadowrun terms. This would be a Decker. Um, you know, this would be Ed from. Uh... Wow, uh, the ice has started to affect my brain. I can't. <laughs> Cowboy. I Bebop. think it was the bad. Yeah, it was the bad Netflix adaptation, but uh, that did it. But not the cold. But yeah, um, Ed from Cowboy Bebop. You know, it's it's funny yeah. when that when that when that Netflix adaptation dropped, I ended up doing a I ended up doing a watch party in protest where we watched through Knocking on Heaven's Door. <laughs> uh, and I do, but um, but yeah, the go, the hacker archetype is ba is basically the ghost. Um, the hybrid the hybrid the next one on the list mm -hmm. would it be cr I get a, I get the feeling a lot of people look at the hybrid and say that this is akin to some sort of I... werefolk yeah I could go there um hybrids are kind of the the first thing that when that I created to start this game off um and I was like, what can we do that's different? That's something that should have already been explored by now in Cyberpunk. Um, and I thought, if we're doing gene, you know, hardcore gene edits, why would we not start gene editing people to have animal characteristics? So this is 
This is uh, an attempt by megacorps to uh, get away from having all of their muscle being chromers um, and seeing if they could make people more like animals so that they're easier to control. But, of course, eventually you get unleashed, uh, just like many chromers have from these megacorps, and you still have all of the abilities that they instilled in you. So yeah, whether you are uh, part eagle or part wolf or any other really animal you can think of, uh, yeah, that's exactly what hybrids are. They are custom-built uh, bio-machines that are uh, made to fill a niche in what megacorps need, and now they fill that same niche in the uprising. Mm -hmm. So they don't have as much uh, they don't have as much representation in cyberpunk media um, as the others because uh, they're kind of a, a new creation for us. Yeah, and I'd... I, w I went with I went with werewolves when it came when it came to this because that's the yeah. mo that's the most recognizable werefolk. But since you brought since you brought up eagles, I could I could just as easily say I could just easily say anybody who grew up playing Bloody Roar back on the PS PS one or PS two, this is your <laughs> yeah. playbook. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, people who want to yeah sort of see the more primal side like. You know, chromers are seen as, like, maybe they're not fully human, uh, but hybrids are kind of seen the same way for completely different reasons. So, yeah, very, very interesting uh, moral and social and ethical dilemmas that come with being a part animal in mm -hmm. society. Yeah. Now, the next one, the irradiated... Um is be because it t it talks about radioactive energy and a toxic symphony um mm -hmm. the mindset that i have is some degree of of mute of mutant but the kind the kind of mutant that is not ex that is not 100 percent stable yeah um almost yeah, but... almost akin to like to like a psychic in 2000 ad or the psychers in um to a, to a lesser extent in warhammer yeah i can absolutely see that uh while they were uh sort of birthed from the idea of um the uh, ghouls in fallout uh the, my idea was that again like everything else these characters have been twisted by megacorps uh, and they were another attempt at human control, basically. Um, and whether they are birthed from radiation or toxic waste, or so you could even go the toxic Avenger kind of route with them, uh, where whatever it is that gave them their power, uh, it is probably some kind of byproduct from a mega corporation uh, that has that has. Uh, given at least the characters that probably join the uprising have been have some kind of power, they have some level of control over something outside of their bodies, or sometimes just within their bodies uh, that they can focus on. So I like to think of them as like the most fucked up X Men uh, that are just learning about their powers and how to control them. So there's a lot of that. Or you basically, the, or the get ones to whose powers are as much a danger to them to themselves. Exactly. Um, yeah, shape shifting and getting stuck, um, <laughs> having control over eldritch tentacles that erupt from your body, but then not having enough control to make them go away when you don't want them anymore. Um, mm -hmm. um, or, Wild yeah. Child comes to mind from the old X Factor days. Mm -hmm. And all, all of the different identities he ended up um, taking when his when things got less and less stable, mm -hmm. not he, not helped by the fact that he had to work along alongside um, Sabretooth. <laughs> yeah, you know it was not exactly the picture of stability himself. <laughs> right. Oh, he's sta he's stable. He'll he will be he's very stable when it comes to deciding which way he's going to kill you. 
<laughs> but <clears throat> the then there's the um, pink, which mm. I feel like the the description of the pink, <clears throat> the two things that end up coming to mind are Rocker Boys and in Cyberpunk and um, Face oh. Men in um, Shadowrun. It's yeah, a uh, answer, essentially. For sure, these are sort of a step further. These are quote unquote perfect humans. These are the human species with all the bugs worked out. So everything works properly. You don't have a pink that gets tinnitus. You don't have a pink that gets arthritis. Oh wow, they're all going to be itises. I just realized. Anyhow. Uh, yeah, you, you get these pinks that are considered perfect. They're perfectly beautiful. They uh, can even m manipulate uh, their bodies to a, to a small degree uh, because they've been enhanced for every or for a specific kind of uh, job. Um, so they are, they are humans, uh, but they're humans that are a little too perfect and when people see them, they just know that they're not the same thing as them. They they want to be seen as normal, but uh, they are anything but. Mm -hmm. uh, for whatever reason, the first thing that came to mind is Miranda from Mass Effect. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, I can see that. And how she was basically a designer baby. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which play yeah. plays... Uh, we actually do the rocker thing and the face thing. Uh, faces are silver tongues. Mm -hmm. They'll be in the second expansion, mm -hmm. and rockers are in the first expansion. Uh, and they are they do have some things in common with pinks. Mm -hmm. but yeah, yeah, for their own way for sure. And lastly, the Ripper, which the vibe I get is the is the Ripper docs and the mm -hmm. and met and medics. Someone who's equal parts pharmacist and harmacist. <laughs> I love that. Uh, yeah, absolutely. In f in fact, the visual image I have is um, the Repo Man from well, Repo the Genetic Opera. There you go. Yeah, that's actually I I need to see that exact one. I watched the other Repo and did not realize there were two separate movies, so need to go back. The, the if it's the one that I'm thinking of, that one is not good. <laughs> it wasn't. <laughs> I've heard the other one is not good, but for entirely different and much more entertaining reasons. It is. It is. If you enjoy schlock, you'll you'll enjoy it because you can't you can't expect a musical to take itself that level of serious. Right. Yes, you should not. I, I mean, agree. you can, in theory you can, but. It's not, but um, it's it's like saying in th in theory, you can you can pick a fight with a bear. You can do it. Yep. Wouldn't re wouldn't recommend it, but you can do it. Probably once. Once the first and last time you will do it. Mm -hmm. Like the Darwin Awards are a thing for a reason, or yeah, you can be as stupid as that one guy in Africa who decided to nurse a baby hip, um, raise a baby hippo that he found. Wow. Even though his friends, his colleagues, his family, and his wife told him, "Don't fucking do it." <laughs> then, when the, then when the thing got big, it killed him. Yeah. Yep. Who and who and everybody's like, "Who could? Who? Wow! Who could have seen that coming?" Except for everybody. Everybody. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I'm one of those. I'm one of those people that. Uh... You know, you, you put a, a bear in front of me. I'm going to want to pet it, but I'm going to resist that urge. My partner, not so much. Uh, has a hard time resisting. Now that we're in Virginia, that's uh, becoming a problem. <laughs> so, do, so, don't, so don't inform your partner about any, um, copy, um, any zoos that have capybaras. Got it. Right. She will be in the water or in the uh, enclosure. Oh, it's oh, it's that bad. Oh yeah, it's that bad. <laughs> I I was I, I was I was think I was thinking it was just a case of 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 um of of 
peer pressuring you peer pressuring you into going to the zoo. I didn't realize that. <laughs> I didn't realize oh no, it's it much a, worse. It was a jump the fence kind of situation. Yeah, it's hanging out the uh, passenger side window and uh, cat calling a bear that's eating berries on the side of the road. Bad <laughs> black bear. So they are the uh, least dangerous of the bears. But yeah, but that's that's like saying it's less painful to get punched in the balls instead of kicked in the balls. Yeah, yeah. Which I, I always bring that up to people, and they're they're like, "Well, well, isn't it gonna isn't it gonna hit work?" hurt worse to get kicked and I'm like doesn't matter you're still on the ground in pain yeah I, and and having chosen the method of your pain does not really uh, help alleviate it in any way you know the whole the whole the machine does not know the 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 difference between between metal and flesh nor does it care right and well I've I've seen my fair share of Dar of Darwin Award winners. Yeah. And that and there's a reason that meme will never will never die because somebody will oh, inevitably no. do something stupid. But Yeah. One of the things I feel like the Darwin Awards should av should avoid Florida. Florida just should get its own permanent Darwin Award and then we can focus elsewhere in the world because oh. I feel like Florida's massively overrepresented in the Darwin Darwin Awards. Not as often as, not as much as you think. Really? Wow. Well, the th the thing is with the know. Darwin, the thing is with the Darwin Awards, you have to well die. That's right. That's right. I forgot. They only do honorable mentions if they survive. Mm -hmm. And honorable <laughs> mentions don't get don't get as many and don't get as many no. entries because the yeah. because the bar is too low. Yeah. Um. That's there was. That's why. That's why you end up getting. That's why the focus is more on stories like someone attaching solid fuel rocket boosters to hit to his car, and then so and then. Well, he, it was a one-way trip. They found yeah, the car in pieces. <laughs> that, that sounds like the perfect kind of action to take in a Glitch to the Uprising. Oh, just just make sure you aim that rocket-powered car at somebody you don't like. And, uh, control it by drone or something. Oh, uh, <laughs> I do. That'd be a per it'd be a perfect place for me to for me to put the up button that I've used as a running gag, because <laughs> so so many of the traps and the like I I um I devise as a GM were me were me ripping things off from Chuck Jones. <laughs> I you know the Godfather of Looney Tunes. Gotcha. Oh. Uh, but even with the expanded playbooks that you have in mind, mm -hmm. would it be correct of me to say that each of them is going to be following this rule of this recommended rule of seven that you have? Um, I it's I think I think six would probably be uh the more common number that we hit mm -hmm. uh, on things. So it's going to be three sets of six playbooks. Um, three sets of six glitch cities. Well, three sets of six home by, home bases. That kind of thing. I should I should clarify what I'm what I meant by rule of seven is the total amount of gear enhancements, skills, and relationships. Oh yes, that is true. Yes, um, we tried five, six, and then we landed on seven because yeah, it, it, we just we needed characters to have a little bit more oomph starting out. But yes, in in they do. Um, they will be recommended seven gear enhancements, skills, and relationships. Mm. That is true. Yes. Now, you, it's now based on what I'm seeing, it uh, there does there does seem to be a um a bit. It's using d it's using d sixes, but it's not mm -hmm. exactly the same d six setup as one would expect in Blades in the Dark. Right. So I yeah there. No attributes, so you're not rolling based off of attributes. Mm -hmm. You're rolling off of how well prepared your character is, rather than um, so everybody rolls the same number of dice to start out with. Mm -hmm. So you start. So you start with one die, and you, and um, th and I'm guessing situational things that work in your favor are going to add a dice. 
No, uh, the uh, situational things that work in your favor are actually going to reduce the difficulty. So only a six succeeds uh, and a one causes a glitch. But if you're very well prepared for the action that you're taking, you're the right playbook, you have the right abilities, you have the right gear, etc., mm -hmm. um, that you can convince the other players that your character is well prepared for the action they're taking, they succeed on a five or six. They have a, a one-third chance of success on a single die. Yeah. The, the way you get extra dice is by getting a teammate to back you up or by overclocking your action. So you have this large pool of dice that you can pull from to overclock your actions. And that takes you up to your MAD rating, which is the maximum uh, action dice that you have in your pool mm -hmm. at any given time. But uh, raising or overclocking an action also can result in glitches. So then that is any one you roll causes there to be a twist or uh, a but. A, consequence yes a butt <laughs> and uh the more ones the bigger the butt mm -hmm. uh, you know what that joke's too obvious <laughs> i thought i just said it <laughs> <laughs> but it, yeah. when it comes to when it comes to that glitch pool is the amount of die in that determined by how many how many players there are i know i know some games will take that approach no, um, it is a pool that starts at nine, and nine dice. Uh, when you use up those dice, they, they uh, usually come right back into the pool. But if you do roll a glitch, that die is removed from your pool. Mm -hmm. So those, and then you'll, you'll, uh, your pool will refill, refill based on how well you did in your uh, adventure, that session. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then as you uh, go through the game and your characters become more powerful, you can increase that pool up to 15 dice. Mm -hmm. Now, with that, with that in with that in mind, one of the one of the big things in in the loop when it comes to things like Blades in the Dark and and similar games is having some sort of base. Which mm -hmm. there is, there is somewhat of of that with the, um, up with the uprising home base when when mm -hmm. I'm doing the game setup, yeah. but is but um what a, do you have do you have plans on ha on having some sort of some sort of base as character, kind kind of thing that's shared between the players. I. Uh it's absolutely completely acceptable for players to have a different base than the Uprising's home base. Mm -hmm. uh, I like to think of the PC group, the PC crew, as being the one of the, if not the most, leading rebel cell of the Uprising. So, uh, yeah, generally uh, the assumption is, is that you stay close to the Uprising home base, when, when you're between um, missions, uh, but it, there's absolutely nothing preventing characters from uh, having safe houses and things like that that they can go to if the heat's really on them. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, part of the game setup is choosing the city that is being squashed under the heel of a mega corporation that you live in, whether that's a uh, corporate controlled uh, canyon. Uh, a reef that is uh, being slowly eaten away by a megacorp, a uh, junk-covered island uh, like Rust Haven, a jungle city, the Emerald Scar, um, or a, the Ghost Light Harbor, which is a port city, uh, and then Siberia, which is what, where we're playtesting right now, mm -hmm. uh, Cyber Siberia, a uh, frozen uh, megacorporate city. Uh, and basically, you are trying to wrestle control of your city away from that mega corporation. Mm -hmm. Though during game setup, you choose your city, you choose your home base, and you choose the mega corp that you're fighting against. Yeah, and uh, one thing that I did notice is the fact that each of each of the um each of the glitch each of the glitch cities have a city ability, which I mm -hmm. think I think is a good way to help it help it create an identity since one one particular pet peeve I've had with a lot of a lot of games in the vein of Pied by the Apocalypse or or Blades in the Dark 
is mm-hmm. is a is a, ca- a case of what I call swim damage, where they're <laughs> where they're they're um they're leaving ho- leaving whole swaths of se- of setting building almost almost blank with the expectation of mm-hmm. oh the pl- the players will come up with it on their own, which mm-hmm. there's nothing wrong with that with give with giving a blank check for the players, but at the very least. Give people a little bit of guidance. Don't just throw them right into the right into the deep end of the pool and tell them swim. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The each of the glitch cities has its own page long description. It talks about what it's like to live there, what districts uh, characters might move through, and where you might place your uprising home base within those districts. Mm-hmm. Uh, the quirks. What's what's weird about the place if, if you. You can generally treat uh, any of these glitch cities as a cyberpunk city. Uh, so any tropes that you're used to using with a cyberpunk city probably apply. And then the quirks tell you in which ways that this is different. So in Siberia, Siberia it says clothes aren't just for warmth. They're status symbols. So mm-hmm. people uh, wear elaborate fashion to show that not only are they warm, but they can afford to uh, buy nicer clothes. So each of the cities has its own different uh, quirks. In Siberia, cyber limbs are seen as too much. That's You're too little human just because you have cyber limbs, because to them, they see that cold metal and they're like, why would anyone want to get close to you? Mm -hmm. Um, You're sapping their heat away from them rather than uh, being human. So in Siberia, they're a little bit, uh, they they would have a harder time with rumors uh, than other places might. Yeah, so. I can I can get that I can get that. Now and uh, yeah, every city is like that, and each expansion also provides six more glitch cities. Mm-hmm. So you have a a large number to choose from. So, so giving the game a decent amount of replayability. And of course, e- e- and of course, even even with that, each of the, um, each of each of the play each of the playbooks is going to have its own, its own set of abilities in the way playbooks typically yes. do. Uh, there is there are a couple archetypes from Shadowrun that I'm curious if you plan on doing a rough equivalent of. of uh, I'd love to hear what your ideas are, and yeah, see if any of the eighteen that I have uh, prepped, if uh, any of them match. Um, the so I'll go with one that that ended up getting that ended up getting kind of thrown to the wayside in mm-hmm. um, ever since it ever since it was introduced in in fourth edition. Mm-hmm. Um, Technomancer. Yeah. So. Um, <laughs> We have the, of course, the ghost, which is not quite the same thing. Um, although there, there is a bit of technomancer DNA in the ghost, mm-hmm. um, because you do control things with your mind rather than with your, with a deck necessarily, um, as long as you're interfaced to it. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, so some of the ghost playbook abilities do go into the technomancer uh, area. I would say that's probably one we tried to stay furthest away from and give those sort of technomancery powers to a wide range of playbooks as sort of secondary abilities rather than focusing it all on one character. Mm-hmm. Uh, but one of the things we do plan on doing after when we're releasing the, the last book, the third expansion, is giving a, a blank playbook so you could build a technomancer out of bits of the ripper bits of the ghost and bits of the cromer um, and some other stuff that uh, hasn't been released yet you have a cybermancer mm-hmm. which is similar to a cromer but with shape shifting technology mm-hmm. so so yeah. that brings me to the next one um, yeah riggers yes so our version of the rigger is called a tinker and they're in the first expansion they were actually there was originally going to be a rule of seven uh as soon as we landed on seven pieces of 
peer enhancement skill and relationships. So originally, the in the seven playbooks, Tinker was the last one. Uh, tinker, tinkers are uh, geniuses who innovate from the scrapyard, breathing life into discarded tech, uh, creating their own gadgets and robot allies from the city's waste. So yeah, very much on the, the rigor side of things and their powers... Uh, as you grow the character, they become able to take control of more uh, types of equipment and things like that. So yeah, Tinkers are the closest thing to a rigger. Kind of like a mix between a... Uh, if you took the uh, some of the abilities of a ghost and some of the abilities of a Tinker, you could build the rigger archetype almost perfectly. Mm-hmm. One of my one of my favorites, that, and this is the next one on my list, is mm -hmm. the adept. Okay, so um, when it came to magic and things like that, we d we we shied away from it being um, from there being any sort of like uh, internal powers, but we did take the irradiated and go a step further with them. So the, the sort of adept version of the irradiated is called a magus, and they are a heal-slash-harm-focused irradiated. So they are the ability to control things within their bodies to a much higher degree. They're kind of like the... Uh, the yeah, <laughs> they they don't quite fit into the they don't fit perfectly into that box. Mm -hmm. uh, the brawler, uh, without the magic, is is I would say closer to how how most people play an adept, especially a physical adept. Um, so yeah, a brawler is um, a mix between a it's sort of a chromer that doesn't like to fight with um, firearms in general. Yeah. Well, the whole principle behind adepts is taking their taking their magic and using it externally to let them do the there's nothing new there's nothing new that they can do they just can do anything a human can do just better, better just better yeah i would say the hybrid is probably the closest to that then because basically think of an animal that can do the thing that you want to do and then make a hybrid around that animal, and basically you'll have the preternatural senses that a uh, adept, especially a physical adept, would have. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, without because there is no um, external, there's no magic system or anything like that. Uh, yeah, I think the hybrid's about as close as you would usually be able to get. Yeah, I could, I could cert, I could certainly see it, and. When it comes to the playbook abilities, I did notice that with with several of them, there's um, a couple there's a couple check boxes. Mm -hmm. um, what is that meant to entail? Yeah, so when you get when you start a character, you get to check both boxes on one of the abilities. When you are upgrading an ability, you check the first box as the first upgrade. You don't have the ability yet, but you're working toward it. And some abilities let you do a partial version of the ability when you only have the first box checked. Mm -hmm. But you get the full ability once both boxes are checked. Yeah. So, yeah, um, I think one of them might be the Tinker, who, uh, when you check the first box on one of their abilities, it, give, it gives them the ability to add another machine type to what they can tinker with well. Uh, and then when you get the second one, it either gives you a second uh, machine type that you can use. I think it does that, and it gives you an, an actual ability that you can use during gameplay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, It's to equivocate the six upgrades that it takes to max out your glitch pool to the six upgrades it would take to um, get all the abilities for your playbook. So that um, if if a person wants to go in either of those directions and max that out, it'll take about the same amount of time. That was the uh, game design reason behind that. Mm -hmm. 
Now, with the, with that in mind, I know I know that this is so this is something that is that has been um, that you've been working on for the la for the last few we weeks at at least that's yeah. how I found about. Yep, about that's it. Uh, literally came up with the idea and decided to start writing it down the day before my partner's uh, dad passed away, and so I think it was kind of a way of distracting myself with. Um, something that uh, I knew I could do well. And I just had this strong feeling of like, I need to make something that I can leave in the world that feels, it feels like something I've wanted to make for a long time mm -hmm. um, and just to have it sat down and done it. So I've actually made two, well, three books and, uh, and a second game mm -hmm. over the last uh, month. Yeah. So just had a really creative period. Mm-hmm. And so yeah, very short time. <laughs> That's why there's very little art in these so far. Yeah, is uh, waiting for the artists to catch up. <laughs> yeah, but the 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 ne next thing I was next thing I was curious about is you you mentioned one more you mentioned one more expansion obviously the mm -hmm. core material and unleashed in at least in insofar as the text is already out yeah. in the wild when when would you suppose the next one is would come along and do you plan on doing a collected version yeah yeah we we do definitely so uh the third book uh I will be working on over the next month or so uh, getting these last um, six uh, playbooks out and basically figuring out where I need to fill in any blanks. Uh, so by playtesting, which is starting up next week, uh, by playtesting, I hope to find any little leaks where I sort of forgot to put the the link between you know one mechanic and another um, and find any of those little breakages or places where I could add a chart that might make things a little easier to understand or a flow chart for how the game works, things like that. So I'm working on a GM screen right now that'll be in the third book um, and uh, and finishing up each of those uh, playbooks as well. Mm -hmm. And then, yes, it, there will be a collected uh, game that has all 18 Glitch Cities, all 18 uh, playbooks, etc., mm -hmm. uh, all in one book for you. Yeah, uh, that'll just be rewritten um, so that it doesn't look like three separate books. It'll just be rewritten as one. Mm -hmm. Oh, and pro probably since since it's going to be combining that that many um that many books, probably having um some some bookmarks and the like. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Right now, the core rules is I think something like thirty eight pages. Thirty nine. Um. Yeah. And then with with a uh, example character, so um, yeah, that is uh, yeah, mm -hmm. that it should be around a hundred and fifty pages when it's finished, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, with with um, a, a, with some extra padding put in to make things a little easier. That I find it if there are any rough edges that I can shave off. Um, so yeah. Mm -hmm. And I I will certainly look forward to seeing how it develops. But yeah. with with that said, I do want to sincerely thank you for taking the time out of your schedule to come to come all the way to my te my temple once again. Not a problem at all. I'm I'm actually really happy to be back here. Mm -hmm. It's a it's a nice relaxing place to hang out. And anytime you see fit to return, the door is always open. As I often Thank say so around much. here, drinking is not mandatory, but it is encouraged. Good, because I'm thirsty. <laughs> and of <laughs> course, a sincere thanks goes out to everyone who took the time out of their schedule to come onto the show and enjoy the madness. And there will be plenty more where that came from, as there always is here on the open bar of the internet. But until then, on behalf of the good brothers present and not present, my name is Mildra, I am your gaming monk, stay fucking frosty everybody!